Hi, and welcome to the Your Good News Podcast. With me, your host, Catherine Getty. It's easy to believe the news around us, that the world is dark and the future is the same. But what if we chose something different? What if we chose to find the good news in each day? This podcast is a collection of interviews with friends, mentors, colleagues on their good news, and some solo episodes on inspiration I find. From business to health to politics and kind of everything in between, it's my hope you leave with a boost and find your good news. Welcome back to another episode of the Your Good News podcast. It's me, Catherine, your host. In this episode, I am joined by Jamie. She's a certified running coach, but I first found her page through a friend, Amber, and what really attracted me to her and why I wanted to invite her on was how she talked about movement in such a positive way and how she had fun with running. And as someone who was really just starting to run when I found her, the idea of loving and running felt confusing to say the least, but In this episode, we really tackle goal setting through the lens of running. And we talk about how through setting a big goal, that's kind of scary, how it is so important to enroll others in that dream and how there's ripple impacts that we can never expect from goal setting and from learning to run. We talk about self-growth that happens and how Jamie works with athletes to tailor make a plan and help them achieve their goals. And we use those experiences as a way to describe the idea of knocking down any walls that we see in our future. So many nuggets in this episode. Without further ado, my interview with Jamie. Welcome back to another episode of the Your Good News podcast. I am really excited to have my next guest on, Jamie. Jamie, as I start every episode, what's your good news today? Well, first of all, I'm so excited and honored to be here. So that's part of my good news. And um, another piece of good news for me is that I just had a weekend away with one of my best friends since middle school. So we've been friends now for about 25 years. And she lives in Chicago, so I got to get away for the weekend and spend time with her, which was amazing. Isn't it amazing when you have friends like that where it's like you may not see them all the time, but like you pick up as if no time has passed. It sounds like it kind of was that experience. So much so. I We had so many laughs, so many giggles, got to catch up. It was such a quick 48 hours, um, but worth every minute of, of all the craziness and fun times we had, for sure. <sighs> That's making me so excited. I'm going to see one of my really good friends in a few weeks. So, I am I'm going to I'm going to live it out too. So, but let's just get started. Let's set the stage. You know, I was able to share kind of in the pre-show prep your running and health coach and I found you like I said through a dear friend Amber. And so I want to start by setting the stage of how did you find running? You have a really great story about PE that I would love for you to share too. Sure. Sure. So I always joke now that I am like a certified running coach that if my former PE teachers found out, they would be like, Jamie, the same Jamie I used to (laughs) teach because I would beg my mom to get me out of the timed mile or the pacer challenge. And it like has like, gives me like the chills even thinking Mm -hmm. about those memories. So Flash forward to after college, I was a teacher at the time, and one of my um, friends who I used to teach with was training for a half marathon, and I was like, you're crazy. That's insane. How long is that? Oh, my goodness. You know, so on and so forth. So, you know, during her training, she was like, why don't you run with me after school today or is it this week sometime? And I was like, I don't know if I can even like, I don't even know if I own running shoes. And she's like, just come <laughs> with me, whatever. So um, I went on a run with her, lots of walking, lots of fun, lots of laughs. Um, so she was the one that sort of inspired me to run my first 5k. And that's the spring of that year, that school year, I ran my first 5k, so much fun just like just so much self growth and so mm-hmm. much appreciation not only for the sport uh physically but more mentally so that was really what kickstarted me to kind of develop my love for running and since then I've run 
four marathons, dozen half marathons, and countless races in between. I love how you start said you started, and it sounds like kind of how I started of like, oh, I don't, that's not for me. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't run. I'm only run if I'm being chased. Mm-hmm. I know that's the joke. Yeah. Um, but I love how you talk about the self growth, and I think we're gonna we're just gonna dive into that today. You know, mm-hmm. as someone who doesn't even after running a 10 mile or and a half marathon, I don't consider, sometimes it's hard to say I'm a runner. Mm-hmm. I know I've learned so much in that self-growth confidence, understanding my body, understanding when to say yes. And when to say no, mm-hmm. what have been some of those lessons in that self-growth area that you're like, wow, I didn't expect this to happen. So I have found that sort of Running is therapy, but it's not. You know, of course, there are so many tools professionally that that athletes and people should seek. Um, but running for me provides that opportunity to reflect on my day, set an intention. If I'm running out in the morning, push myself out of my comfort zone. I think when I was in grade school through college, running was like a very competitive sport, in my mm-hmm. opinion, in my eyes. And it was a lot about comparison and you know, around the time mile, I just see people laughing me. And so now I'm on the other side of it. There's so much more that I can dive into mentally with that. And it's more of a competition with myself. And that's what I try to remind myself. Yeah. No. And it's, I think it's such a good point that you touch on of time was really the only metric. And mm-hmm. so when I thought about running, I was like, well, I'm not that fast. Mm-hmm. And I had a good friend was like, just be consistent at it. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, Mm -hmm. make that commitment to yourself. And so it sounds like you kind of broke through that barrier too of like, time doesn't have to be how I judge myself. Was that hard to kind of shift that mindset? Or how did you get through kind of that shifting? It sounds like. Totally. And there are still moments that I have that self-doubt of time. Um, When I run a certain race and I don't achieve that goal I have, I'm like, ah, you know, I do really kind of come down to myself, but i I've learned to shift that mindset a little bit. I can dive into it. But I think I think the growth that has happened since I started the running journey, I think when I first got started, I had to be fast or I had to yeah. run every mile at a quick pace. And so I was injuring myself. I was burning out. We had to take time off of running because of that. So I think those learning curves really put things in perspective that, you know what, I might not be the fastest. I might not be where I want to be just yet, but thinking about the big picture of where I mm. have come and where I've started is the most important thing that I really just keep in my back pocket when I'm having those moments. And I always try to say to my athletes and to myself that the race day is the celebration. Mm-hmm. So no matter what happens out there in that course, so much goes on behind the scenes that no one realizes, only you. And that is really, really what's so important. There's just so many nuggets I'm writing down as you're saying that. I remember you, I feel like you posted about, I saw in your thing, the race day is a celebration. And I can't tell you personally how much that helped me shift because not to get emotional, but like when I was thinking about the race, I was thinking about time. Yeah. Wow. I am getting emotional. Um, And when you, when you posted that, it made me realize every time I laced up those shoes and Mm -hmm. went out. When I didn't want to, or it was hard, or I learned something about X, Y, and Z of how to, you know, count my steps or to breathe better. Those were the many wins Mm -hmm. that led to getting to race day. Mm -hmm. And I think when people think about running, they think, oh, it has to be easy. Well, life isn't easy. Mm -hmm. And I feel like running is very similar to life. Mm -hmm. Have you found, have you found kind of the similarities too? Yes, absolutely. Oh my gosh. I have all the feels as you were sharing that because there's so much growth that happens behind the scenes of training um, and self-discovery that like, it's, I want to talk more about that. Like not like today, just in life (laughs) of, of, of the running journey that that's like my favorite part about it. Um, but I, I've learned and the past few years, have been that self-growth and discovery for me as I've become a coach or as I decided that I wanted to pursue this. And I know, um, I thought when I graduated college or even when I was in high school, there was just like one set path for me. And so I was expected, or in my mind, I expected that I was just going to do 
be a teacher for the rest of my career. And that's just how it was going to be. And you know, life happened and, you know, crappy things happened in my life. And, and I think running has helped me navigate that, but it's also sort of put in perspective that running is like an evolving journey of, of life and, and it, it will always be there for you or whatever sport, you know, of course, running is not for everyone. So I encourage anyone who's out there to just really explore and dive deep into whatever drives them to be happy and whatever makes them feel good. Um, and wherever and anything that can provide that self growth, self growth and discovery. And that's what I love so much about all the things that you're creating online, because I feel like you talk about movement as a, as a part in it. You talk about running, but it doesn't have to be about running. And Mm -hmm. I love how you brought up however you can find that movement, Mm -hmm. however you want to find that movement is so important to find those little journeys. Did you find that, you know, you became a coach after being a teacher? What kind of lessons did you pull through from teaching that you're like, wow, this is, was preparing me to be a coach all along in a different way? Mm -hmm. So I was a teacher for about 10 years. And when I had my daughter, I took time off. And around the time of COVID, I ended up ex- was luck- lucky enough I was able to extend my maternity leave. And during that time, I was doing a lot of self-growth and self-discovery of you know, becoming a mom and having a new role of not teaching. And, you know, I love running. I love teaching. How could I combine both these passions that I love and help others? So, of course, I want athletes that I'm working with to get stronger and faster, but my, my number one goal is just to foster the love of the sport and to help them find out and discover how strong they really are um, inside the running world and outside of the running world. I love how you talk about, you know, I love teaching and I loved running and I figured out a way. And I think that that's such a beautiful message. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, it may not be a career shift. Maybe someone's got a passion for talking and they want to create a podcast, who knows, or maybe they love gardening and they create a business around it. I mean, it sounds like you took kind of some of the lessons of reflecting and learning those curves to be like, okay, I like these two things. How do I put them together and Mm -hmm. see if it, if it works? I think that, you know, running has definitely changed me and it sounds like it is really changed for you too, but I'd love to talk more about kind of that process of becoming a coach So you're now helping runners, like you said, get faster and stronger, find that love. Was that moment in 2020 really what kind of was the catalyst for you or had it been a quiet dream for a while? You know, I think it had been quite a dream for a while. I um, had a running coach um, as I first got started. I was like, I love learning about the sport and I love learning that I really need to slow down in order to go fast. And I love the workouts that she provided for me. But Right around the time that I found out I was expecting, I was going through like a rut, like a mental rut. And it was in 2019, so it was before COVID. And I love teaching. And there are times that I miss it. I think the, the longer stretches of me not being in the classroom have made me really appreciate that I do love that. So I'm happy for that time off. But I didn't love myself outside of that. And and it's because I... I wasn't standing up for myself and I wasn't, I felt like I wasn't the best teacher I could have been at that moment for, for out for variables outside of the classroom. Yeah. Um, the people I was surrounding myself with in the school, out of the school, how I portrayed myself, what I thought I needed to be doing during that time. So I think there was like a lot of factors and a lot of layers that sort of made me realize that I'm not the best person I can be right now. So that was May, June of 2019. I remember telling my mom, I need a change. I just need a reset. I need something. Like, I just, I'm just not feeling my happiest right now. And I was taking out on others for it. And that's not fair. Yeah. And I was becoming a person I don't like. I mean, girl, I just was just, just like portraying outwards in a way that was not meaningful. And I wasn't happy for that. Um, and then unfortunately, my mom passed away that fall. And it was unexpected. And so I, I hit rock bottom, to be honest, uh, mentally, because she was my rock. And, and I have, you know, luckily I have an amazing support system in my family and my husband, uh, but you know, I went through it. And I felt like during that time, during the school year, I was like, you know what, I need to do some re self discovery. And when I'm home on maternity leave, it's just going to be a, a time for me to reflect. 
I'm getting outside of the classroom for a little bit. If I want to go back in the fall, I will. But what can I do to help fill my bucket? Because when I realized during that time that the most important relationship I'm ever going to have in my life is one with myself. And if I'm not my best, I know this about myself. If I'm not my happiest, then I am not going to be the best wife or I'm not going to be the best friend or I'm not going to be the best mom. And I knew becoming a mom was I needed to work on myself. I want to thank you so much for sharing that because my mom is my best friend. Again, I'm getting emotional today. I don't know. So I can only imagine like having to experience that and also having experiencing such joy and having Mm -hmm. to hold two emotions Mm -hmm. at the same time. Mm But I think that that reflection piece, it's funny, I wrote i wrote reflection before you said it, but the self-awareness that you're talking about, like that is something that's so beautiful that I don't think we always applaud because taking the time to be like, I'm not being my best. I know I need, I want to be better for me. That's an amazing message, Jamie. Like, Thank you. Yeah. I mean, we need to, we need to praise that more because I think that so often we it's easy to kind of get stuck in the, okay, well, here's my schedule and here's what I'm going to do today. Mm -hmm. And I think finding outlets like running can be so powerful. And it's, it's funny how life can mimic running and, and vice versa. Did you take some of those, the reflection pieces during that time? How did you kind of apply it to being a coach? The one of the positive moments of becoming a mom as I sort of found my love for running again. I had had to take some time off while I was pregnant and I actually was a little burned out from it. And so I encourage anyone who goes through anything in life that they just need a pause from to do that because I do find that you will rediscover that love and you'll come back stronger for it. So when I rediscovered that, I kind of remember being like, oh my gosh, this is like, this is, this is what's driving me right now. This is where I feel my creativity flow. This is where I'm able to you know, spend time with my daughter because we were doing stroller miles together. And this is where I feel so strong mentally and physically. So I think that was the driving force behind me being like, yeah, let me try this. And if it, if I fail, if I don't enjoy it as much as I am, I know I tried it. I love that. And I think it's so important to, again, you're just incredibly self-aware to know, okay, I'm being lit up by this. I think Mm -hmm. so often we're like, okay, that's just the endorphins making me Mm -hmm. happy. Mm -hmm. But I think it's important to realize it could be any workout or could be any activity. Sometimes I'm like, I I signed up for this class. I used to love doing this class, but I don't really love to, I'm not feeling it right Mm -hmm. now. And I think there's a lot of guilt in that. And it sounds like you're like, okay, I'm going to come back to you. I'm not putting you away forever. I'm not Mm -hmm. saying it's never, I'm just saying, we're just going to take a little time apart. So mm-hmm. absence make that, you know, heart grow fonder. For sure. For those who are thinking about, you know, maybe I do want to start to run, but I am really nervous. I know I was like, I can't run a mile. Yeah. I'm having like, you know, presidential <laughs> fitness <laughs> award oh. flashbacks to that gym. And I'm like, I don't want to run 27 laps around this gym to get a mile. <laughs> what would you say to that person who's like, I'm interested, but I I don't know if it's for me. So it's funny you mentioned like the, that like flashback of like, ooh, like cringe worthy. So I try to remind athletes who are just getting started or who I've been working with for, for a year and a half or since I've got started that we used to or sometimes used running as a form of punishment um, mm-hmm. with, you know, if you're late to practice, run some laps. If you mess something up, you know, whatever, run some laps. Um, and then again, you had to have like X time for the time mile, or, you know, you only had X amount of time to complete it. And Mm -hmm. so I feel like there's just like a lot of pressure that goes on with it. So I always tell athletes who are, who are like, you know what, I want to give this a whirl, try it, small doses, walking is your best friend, let go of the ego. You do not have to hold a certain pace. If you enjoy running, if you run, you are a runner. It is, most of us are luckily lucky enough to be born with the capability to be able to move our feet like that. And um, so just give yourself some grace with it. You know, start small. If, if athletes are like, hey, I want to start running, but I don't run now, I would tell them run one day this week. And it can be walk, run intervals, start small. And then the next week, maybe increase to two days a week in, with walk, run intervals. And then 
whatever that case may be or whatever goal they want to work on, you can get there. Absolutely. But make sure your heart's in the right place. Let go of that ego and just really believe in yourself. I love you talking about the let go of your ego because my boyfriend is like an avid runner. So it kind of started as like an activity for us to do together. And then I was like, I don't hate this. Mm -hmm. I thought I was going to hate this. Mm -hmm. But in the beginning, my heart rate would be so high. It felt like it was like bursting out of my chest. I was like, this isn't feel right. He's like, we should probably walk. So you're not getting hurt. But I felt like, oh, well, if I walk at all, I'm not a runner. So I think it's pretty powerful you saying walk, run. It mm-hmm. is, is that something you'd say to people? It's like, yeah, it, you're a runner even if you walk. Totally. If you run one mile, half a mile, 20 miles, ultra marathon, anything in between, walking is your friend and it will provide you the opportunity to go further, go longer. And it's just an off. Yeah. So you catch your breath, reset a little bit. Um, and, so on and so forth with, with the possibilities of how run, a walking can really help your, your independent growth with it, for sure. That's amazing. And do you help clients kind of identify their goals or do they come to you and it's like, okay, I want to do this. Mm-hmm. How can we support that? I mean, I think as someone who's like, okay, well, I want to run again. I can't believe I'm saying that again. Maybe. I want to do another half. Yay! It was It was honestly really, it went fast. I don't know if people say that to you, but the race day goes oh, way too fast. It's such a weird, like, get the post-race blues because there's so much buildup behind the scenes of, like, 10 to 20 weeks of training or, yeah. after, or whatever the case might be. And it's a routine. It's a schedule. And then as soon as it's over, it's kind of like a vacation. You know, going into it, there's, there's like, this time preparing for it. And all of a sudden, you get back from your vacation. And you're like, that's it? Like, it's uh-huh. over? You're like, what now? Yeah. Sort of. So if athletes are coming to me and they're undecided, so I will say, let me backtrack. Um, athletes who decide they want to reach out and connect with me, it's a mix. It's a combination of like, hey, I know I want to run this race, or I know I want to improve my time for this distance. Um, and then there are many athletes who are like, hey, I started really that I kind of like running. And I just want to see some structure. I just want to learn more about the sport. And I think I'm going too fast. Can you tell me what paces I should be hitting and then we'll sort of dive into some goals that I have. So definitely a combination of the two of goal setting, um, whether athletes have a distinct goal or not, we do create some sort of goal. Um, I like doing that just to make sure we're working towards something Yeah, totally can get pivot, totally can change. I call it a draft, um, an open form draft. So that uh, we can definitely work towards, but, you know, change it as needed, for sure. Adding more miles, decreasing the miles, resetting the structure of whatever they want to work towards, open document. Do you kind of apply, is it in a 90 day or six month or does it depend on kind of the timing for the athlete? And do you also... Do you feel like then you take that, this is a two-part question, then do you take that personally and do similar, like, I'm going to set a goal for myself and work with myself? So the goals vary for each athlete. Some are 60-day goals, some are six-month goals, some are even longer or shorter in between. So the cool thing about working with a coach is that it can be designed personally to you and what you like. Um, If athletes um, start working with me and they don't have a specific goal in mind that I usually use 90 days as a starting point. So we have something to work towards. So whether that's running a 5k or just increasing stamina or just increasing distance, whatever, whatever they would like to get out of our time together, that's where I set the bar for of that 90 days. Again, it's very open, very free form. Sometimes two weeks into it, athletes like, or, Hey, I found a race or, Hey, (laughs) <laughs> you know what? This is not for me. I want to tweak it or run more or whatever. But it's just, I I do have like a 90 day ish window for athletes who are uncertain. And then anyone who knows they want to run a certain race, then I use that as an end point. And I do backwards planning, the teaching style I used to um, uh, implement in my classroom and backwards plan. I like doing that because make sure we're increasing the miles safely pulling back appropriately, making sure I can get the athletes prepared for said race safely. Um, But again, I call it a draft because 
things will most likely change. You know, like, yeah. do you have a vacation? It's really yucky weather out. Oh, well, you're just not feeling running that day. Or, hey, I'm loving this. I want to increase my my miles or my volume. So we just use that and deviate from there. I love that it's like, it's it's personalized. I, I've been really gravitating towards a 90 day, like mm-hmm. the 90 day, because mm-hmm. I feel like it feels manageable, but it also feels like, wow, you can do a lot in 90 days. And sometimes I know in the last two years, it has felt like, days go really slowly or really fast. It's a weird yeah. time blur thing. Yep. But I, I love that that's kind of a 90 day thing that you're working on, but it can be however long, short that they want that to be. Totally. And then for me, I um, I'm not set in stone for like training cycle right yeah. now. So I'm just kind of running for fun, but I've been really trying to think of the long-term perspective of the picture of where I started a few years ago or a couple years ago as a running coach. So that's where I'm basing my training off of like, okay, I know I like running a lot of, I am, I like high volume weeks. It's just my personal preference, even though yeah. I'm training for anything or training for a marathon. I just enjoy those like longer runs. So that's where I'm building from and putting things in perspective of kind of where I started at this point. It's funny how like in the beginning, I was like one mile felt like it was 18 <laughs> miles. Oh gosh, yes. And now it's like, oh, I actually really like the length of like six mm-hmm. miles. And mm-hmm. I like, can't believe I'm saying those words out loud. My mom is also listening to this and can't believe I'm saying those words out loud. Because I grew up, I danced like all of my life and da- and there was no running. And I was like, I didn't pick that because of that. But I was like, it ain't bad that I don't have to run. Totally. I was a cheerleader. So there wasn't yeah. much running. There wasn't much running. We did have to run like the beginning of the season for conditioning, mm. but like, And again, it wasn't we got trouble and stuff, but yeah, it's not (laughs) something we had to consistently do. So I get that. (laughs) Well, before we bring this puppy home, any last thoughts? I mean, we have talked about the self-growth that can happen through running, how you can reflect on your ideas, set an intention for the day, shift your mindset, create goals, tweak those goals. We should do that probably more often in life. And remembering where we started and where we are now and being really grateful for that transition. Anything else you want to leave the listeners with? So many nuggets today. So I you're. I know. I'm like, I could go like <laughs> taking different directions for another 80 minutes with this. Let me think. Uh, becoming a coach has made me realize that there's so much self discovery and, and growth that, that can happen more than I even realized. And I was 34 at the time. And I just thought my career was set for me at that point as a teacher. And I just thought that I really couldn't update or change. And I was kind of stuck there. Um, And though I might go back into teaching one day, I might not. I really want people to know that it's never too late to start something and and push yourself outside of your comfort zone um, and give it a try because nothing is permanent. And if you believe in yourself and you know that it provides happiness and joy, then it's worth trying and it's worth pursuing. I mean, that's beautiful. Like that's a lesson we need to hear. And that's some darn good news Mm -hmm. is that we aren't stuck. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can always change. And that's so important. And I love becoming a running coach because I'm like, okay, what can I learn, you know, in the science field or, you know, I'm becoming a personal trainer now. And it's just like, there's, you know, my learning doesn't stop here and my self-discovery doesn't stop here. And I want to continue growing and I want to continue working with others. And Maybe my my goals might shift in a year, five years or 10 years, and maybe something will change. But for the moment, just so grateful that I just said, yep, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Mm. Well, I think this is a call to action to listeners mm. to say, what's that quiet dream mm-hmm. that you've not been listening to? And just start taking some messy action one mm-hmm. step at a time. The other a nugget I wanted to say is that I felt a lot of um, imposter syndrome becoming a running mm. coach. And I know I'm not the fastest. I know that there's so many other like incredible coaches that I look up to and athletes who are so inspiring, but it's always a good reminder that there's always room for more people out there to become a coach or become a runner or to do whatever profession you want. So if you feel like something is oversaturated, yeah, of course, there might be a lot of people that do that profession, but there's no one that's you. 
And that's really, really important. I try to remind myself that as, as I navigate imposter syndrome and as I navigate self-doubt, um, whether it's my runs or becoming, a, you know, being a mom or a spouse, like there's no one that's you. So just remember that and people need you in the world. What a perfect way to bring this puppy home. Mm-hmm. Jamie, I'm going to be putting all of your information in the show notes. So if people want to reach out to you, work with you, check out in the show notes and I'll also put on my social media. So thank thank you you so much. much. I had this was awesome. It went too quick. (laughs) I mean, it was just a conversation. It was. So I really enjoyed spending time with you and connecting with you. So I'm very grateful for that. Thank you. Thank you. How much fun was that? Uh, Even if you're not a runner, I think that there are so many nuggets that can be applied. And that's really why I wanted to invite her on is someone who talks about movement in such a fun way and makes it not a punishment is something that I was really attracted to. And so I thought that it would be great for us to listen to the idea of goal setting, the idea of how setting goals and, and tackling them can really create confidence, um, can have uh, impacts in our lives that we don't even realize. So I wonder what stood out to you. And we just need to thank Jamie. Jamie, thank you so much for joining today's episode. And thank you for listening to another episode of the Your Good News podcast. If you liked this episode, leave a review. Hit that subscribe button on Apple Music, Spotify, wherever you stream. Reach out to me. I'm on Instagram at Katherine Getty, or you can view my website, Your Good News Podcast. Reach out to me. I'd love to hear feedback on this episode or any of the other episodes. And tune in next week to another episode of the Your Good News Podcast.